We pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and love of God our Father, and of Jesus Christ his Son, and the consolation of the Spirit be always with you. As we come in this day and age, it is so easy to fall prey to discouragement or despair. And even as we go through the land of dry bones, that God can do marvelous things, and we pray that we be open and not allow ourselves to become discouraged from doing God's will. Let us pray. O oh God, who to safeguard the Catholic faith and to restore all things in Christ, filled Pope St. Pius X with heavenly wisdom and apostolic fortitude, graciously grant that, following his teaching and example, we may gain an eternal eternal prize through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he led me out of the spirit of the Lord and set me in the center of the plain, which was now filled with bones. He made me walk among them in every direction so that I saw how many they were on the surface of the plain how dry they were. He asked me, son of man, can these bones come to life? Lord God, I answered, you alone know that. Then he said to me, prophesy over these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones. See, I will bring spirit into you that you may come to life. I will put sinews upon you, make flesh grow over you, cover you with skin, and put spirit in them, in you so that you may come to life and know that I am the Lord. I prophesied as I had been told, and even as I was prophesying, I heard a noise, 
It was a rattling as the bones came together, bone joining bone. I saw the sinews and the flesh come upon them and the skin cover them, but there was no spirit in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the spirit, prophesy son of man and say to the spirit, thus says the Lord, from the four winds come, O spirit, and breathe into these slain that they may come to life. I prophesied as he told me, and the spirit came into them. They came alive and stood upright, a vast army. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They have been saying, our bones are dried up, our hope is lost, and we are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, O oh my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and have you rise from them, O oh my people. I will put my spirit in you that you may live and I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised and I will do it, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm is Give thanks to the Lord, his love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord, his love is everlasting. Let the redeemed of the Lord say, those whom he has redeemed from the land, from the hand of the foe, and gathered from the lands, from the east and the west, from the north and the south, Give thanks to the Lord, his love is everlasting. They went astray in the desert wilderness. The way to an inhabited city they did not find. Hungry and thirsty, their life was wasting away within them. Give thanks to the Lord, his love is everlasting. They cried to the Lord in their distress. From their straits, he rescued them, and he led them by a direct way to reach an inhabited city. Give thanks to the Lord, his love is everlasting. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his kindness and his wondrous deeds to the children of men because he satisfied the longing soul and filled the hungry soul with good things. Give thanks to the Lord, his love is everlasting.
Lord be with you. And your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Lord be in our minds, in our lips, and in our hearts. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they assembled in a body, and one of them, a lawyer, in an attempt to trip him up, asked him, Teacher, which commandment of the law is the greatest? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with your whole heart, with your whole soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments, the whole law is based, and the prophets as well. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The majority of the Pharisees and Sadducees had their own agendas and they wished to turn people against Jesus. They wanted to create controversy and division. Jesus answered them directly and definitively. Love God totally and love your neighbor as yourself. U.S. culture presently is politicized and divided. And all we have to do is to do what the Pharisees did. And what is the most important social and religious issue? And people will gravitate to their favorite hot button issue. We need to do what Jesus did. Love God totally and love our neighbor. Now my list of important things and your list might be different. As I was praying on this, it came to me allow our challenge and in a sense even our division to become a blessing because neither you nor I can do everything. And so there might be some for whom abortion is the number one issue, another one racial justice is the number one issue, another one environment is the number one issue. But that becomes like saying which one of the Ten Commandments is the most important. Well, there can be a lot of argument over that. All 10 are important. <laughs> There's 10 
important. <laughs> and God calls us in our hearts to take our peace and allowing the kingdom of God to be built. None of us can do it all. But to see this not as a curse, but really as a blessing. God has put on each of us a section of the building. And may we wholeheartedly take care of that section. And as we do so, never to forget backing off a little bit and seeing the whole picture. Jesus reminding us to love God with all our heart and mind and soul and strength. And to love our neighbor universally. We bring our prayers before the Lord, knowing of the many needs that we have these days. That all members of the church may be refreshed in faith by the same life-giving spirit that emboldened Pope St. Pius X, whom we celebrate today. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer that those who exercise authority in our world may be blessed with wisdom and compassion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That those suffering from depression, grief, or hopelessness may experience the healing power of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer that the Holy Spirit may continue to transform every heart in this community, here physically or online, to the fullness of love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. That those who have died may experience the new life promised by Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer and a special intention for issues of life and justice, abortion, environment, world hunger, and all of the challenges of our times. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Is there someone that you want to bring up today? For Joshua, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Dan Lewis, a quadriplegic, a very dear friend of mine, that he and his caregivers can meet him and his mm. face all of them with grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the, the, the many, 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 many people that send in prayer requests to St. Bonaventure, that the Lord watch over each of them and their struggles and the people that they're praying for, and the social issues and, and, and moral issues that they're praying for. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of goodness, 
we sometimes can be tempted to be overcome, but you can put the dry bones together. Help us to continue working for the building of your kingdom and that the prayers that we have brought to you may be accomplished through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for all his holy church. So be it. Receive with kindness our oblations and grant, O Lord, we pray that following the teachings of Pope St. Pius, we may celebrate these divine mysteries with sincere reverence and receive them in the spirit of faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is Truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. indeed are holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered 
willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memory of Christ's death and resurrection, we offer you, Heavenly Father, the bread of life and chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one through the power of the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity with Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our Bishop, and all the clergy and faithful. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Pope St. Pius X, with St. Francis, St. Clair, St. Bonaventure, Blessed Solanus, and all of your holy ones, that through their ceaseless intercession for us that we might come to be co-heirs of eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. So we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church. Graciously grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, 
where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you. With, with your you. spirit. Behold, Jesus, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy, worthy that, that you should, should enter, enter under, under my, my roof, roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Solanus would encourage people who couldn't get to Mass or receive communion to ask Jesus to come spiritually into their hearts. He himself did this throughout the day, even when he did celebrate Mass and receive communion. A friend of his asked him one day how to actually go about doing this. Solanus told him, this is what I say. Lord, please come to me in spiritual communion. Send your body and blood gushing through my veins. Send your love into my heart, my soul, and my mind. Lift me up to your bosom and infuse me with your divine love. Amen. Thank you. 
and let us pray. Celebrating the memorial of Pope St. Pius, we pray, O Lord our God, that by the power of this heavenly table, we may be made constant in faith and may be of one accord in your love through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may the blessing of Almighty God be upon us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in peace to be able to do the many things that we're called to do in building the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Shelter me.